Hi everyone, welcome back to Fast TV. Today we're going to talk about a topic that is very close to my heart and the heart of many enthusiast drivers. That is, uh, which is more fun to drive, electric vehicles or traditional engine cars? Now, if you're watching a debate between electric vehicles and traditional vehicles on which will make drivers happier, physics itself may have chosen the winner. Enthusiasts like myself, we have long associated the raw emotion of internal combustion engines with superior driving dynamics. The fundamental physics and structural advantages of electric vehicles are actually revolutionizing vehicle dynamics in ways that traditional powertrains cannot match. At the core of this transformation is the de facto industry standard skateboard platform architecture, where the battery pack integration creates multiple compounding advantages. Unlike internal combustion or ICE vehicles which suffer from significant height differentials in their center of gravity between the engine and non-engine ends, EVs maintain a remarkably consistent center of gravity height throughout their length. This uniformity fundamentally simplifies suspension tuning and enables more predictable handling characteristics. To add to that, the battery pack integration does more than just lower the center of gravity. It actually enhances structural rigidity across the entire chassis, leading to a reduced chassis flex during dynamic maneuvers and providing a superior platform for suspension tuning. You might be surprised to learn that Chinese manufacturers have been particularly adept at exploiting these inherent advantages. It's probably because they have made more electric vehicles than anyone else, they just have experience on their side. They, they demonstrate that the combination of right control and handling precision isn't a compromise but rather a natural outcome of EV architecture. My recent experience with the Proton Emma 7 which is uh, the Geely Galaxy E5 Neta X, Xpeng G6, and most recently the very large Leap Moto C10 really highlights the advantages physics has bestowed on electric cars. Note that all the vehicles I mentioned here are SUVs or crossovers, not sporty sedans. The physics advantage manifests in several ways, several critical ways. The more uniform center of gravity height across the wheelbase typically approaching a 50-50 distribution results in a reduced polar moment of inertia. Think of a figure skater spinning on ice. When with their arms stretched out wide, they spin slowly. But when they pull their arms closer to their body, they spin much faster. Even though they haven't used any extra energy, this happens because they've brought their weight closer to the center of their spin. Now, imagine two cars that weigh exactly the same. The first car has its heaviest parts like the engine spread out far from the center, some at the front, some at the back, kind of like the skater with the arms stretched out. The second car has all its heavy parts like the, the battery packed tightly in the middle and low down like the skater with the arms pulled in. When you try to turn these cars quickly, the first car, like the one stretched out, will resist the change in direction more. It wants to keep going straight, like trying to turn a long truck. The, the second car will turn more willingly because its weight is concentrated in the middle, like pivoting a compact box. It's much easier. This is what we mean when we talk about polar moment of inertia. It's simply how much a car resists changing its direction based on where its weight is located. This is why EVs can feel more agile despite weighing more than regular cars. Their weight is packed tightly in the middle and low down, like that skater with the arms pulled in, again, ready to spin. This decreased rotational inertia fundamentally changes how EVs respond to directional inputs. The centralized mass creates more predictable weight transfer, this is important, during cornering and significantly reduces pitch during acceleration and braking. This leads to better balance roll couples front to rear. This feels more natural turning. This architecture allows suspension engineers to break free from traditional constraints. The lower and more centralized mass distribution permits the use of softer springs, be surprised, eh? While maintaining handling precision, a combination that would be, that's right, impossible in ICE vehicles. This is achieved through reduced roll moment due to the lower center of gravity and decrease just now polar moment of inertia requiring less rotational input. 
and the result is that it is inherently more resistant to body roll and that produces more consistent vertical loads on the tires. Modern EV suspension tuning capitalizes on these advantages through progressive damping characteristics. Since they can use softer springs now, engineers can implement softer responses to small inputs like when you ride, drive over cat's eyes or broken surfaces, which results in higher ride comfort. And at the same time, they can maintain sufficient control over large body movement, when, like when the roads are wavy and the car doesn't feel like it's floating like a boat. In practical application, these physics-based advantages translate to sophisticated handling characteristics, a compliant primary ride with controlled secondary ride movement. And this results in high overall precision despite that slight initial delay in turn in. And it also creates progressive breakaway characteristics. Progressive breakaway characteristics is what gives us, the average driver, more confidence in the car. The enhanced ability when we're making quick turns and superior bump absorption during cornering aren't just engineering achievements. They are the natural outcomes of the EV's fundamental architecture. That said, physics advantage of EVs aren't without their challenges. The most significant hurdle remains the sheer mass of current battery technology. While an EV's weight is ideally positioned, Physics still is physics and it dictates that the heavier vehicle requires more energy to accelerate, brake and change direction. A typical EV can weigh 20 to 30% more than its ICE counterparts, which increases the loads on tires, brakes and suspension components during dynamic maneuvers. The additional mass becomes particularly noticeable during rapid transition. While the lower center of gravity helps to manage this weight, the loss of momentum still applies. Physics applies everywhere. The more mass means more energy is required to initiate and arrest movement. This can manifest as increased tire wear. That's why people keep saying EVs use more tires and this is especially true during aggressive maneuvers and potentially it could reduce ultimate cornering speed compared to lighter ice vehicles with similar power outputs. What this means is that when you're driving an EV, you should enter corners at a slightly lower speed than when you're driving an ICE vehicle. But because it has so much more accuracy and predictability, you can power out your EV really, really early. So the weight penalty also creates a unique challenge in suspension tuning. While the lower center of gravity allows for softer springs, the higher overall mass requires more sophisticated damping controls. Some manufacturers have turned to active suspension systems to manage these forces, but that adds complexity and weight to the vehicle. But from my experience, even when they're using conventional suspension materials like coil springs and normal dampers, these cars are still quite stable when you hit bumps mid-corners. Additionally, the consistent weight distribution of EVs, while generally advantageous, they can also make it harder to tune certain desirable handling characteristics that some drivers enjoy. This is like the ability to adjust the car's attitude inputs mid-corner uh, with throttle. So they call it steer by throttle. So the, this, this, uh, this ability to adjust the car's attitude with the throttle is not so evident in the EV. Uh, this characteristic, which is a negative in a normal engine car, like that disadvantage becomes something that we have learned to play with. It's true that uh, due to all the advantages that we've talked here, yeah, EVs are very stable and very predictable under heavy acceleration. And this may have been described as being a bit more sterile because mid-corner throttle inputs are not dramatic, not as dramatic anymore. For performance driving, the implications are profound. The uniform mass distribution and structural rigidity of the skateboard platform allows for suspension tuning that would be physically impossible to achieve in traditional ICE vehicles. While enthusiasts may miss that visceral roar of the combustion engine, the handling characteristics enable EV architecture to represent a significant advancement in vehicle dynamics. This is why we're starting to hear more and more view reviewers saying just how much fun EVs can be and how much they can play with it in, on tracks and stuff like that. As battery technology continues to evolve and vehicles become lighter, these inherent physical advantages will only become more pronounced. Once you add lightness, all the advantages become just even more visible and more obvious. The future of performance driving isn't just electric. It's not the electric, it's rooted in the fundamental physics that no amount of traditional engineering can overcome. While the internal combustion engine gave us a century of thrilling drive experience, 
the laws of physics favor a different approach. The question isn't whether EV will match traditional performance cars, it's how quickly they'll surpass them. Sometimes when we talk about the fun of driving an ICE car, these funds arise out of the imperfection of the platform that ICE offers. Like when you drive in a 911 with a rear engine, there's a certain way that the car behaves that makes it challenging, that's what's fun. When you drive a mid-engine car, how it will spin really quickly if you lose control, that's another challenge, a different kind of imperfection. And of course, the front engine rear wheel drive car poses a different kind of challenge due to the imperfection of that package. Now, I don't know whether the perfection, as it were, of the EV platform will actually make it feel less intimidating. But that's a good thing for me because I'm an average driver. For really talented drivers, maybe they want to find something a bit more challenging or maybe the technology will just be developed to create a platform that is superior in every way and still would be able to give us that excitement of driving. I think this is why BMW's M division is so keen to embrace electric power for the enthusiasts. If you go and watch their video, they've decided that moving forward, electric will be the way and they've decided on how they're going to do that. Let the good times roll. Okay, that's all that we have for today. If you like our content, just help me out a bit and press the like button and maybe share it with your friends and comments underneath. Uh, do you agree with my points? Or maybe you don't agree with my points. Anyway, if you've not subscribed, please help me by pressing the subscribe button and the bell button so you don't miss out when we upload new videos. Pemandu Malaysia, Pemandu Malaysia, Kita jumpa lagi, insyaAllah.